Hey everyone, Dan at Ochika Bushcraft. Well, I'm out here in the middle of hunting season. Hunting season started um, over a month ago with archery. Rifle season is starting. And this time of year, thousands and thousands of hunters from all over Oregon come to the Ochiko Mountains to get their elk and deer. The Ochikos are the hunting capital of Oregon. So every year we just fill up with hunters. Many of these hunters come from cities. You know, they live in, in uh, large cities and the only time of the year that they come into the woods is during hunting season. They don't know the Ochikos. They don't have experience um, out here beyond their yearly trip to come try and get their deer and come try and get their elk. And what happens every single year is that search and rescue is out here finding them, saving them, sometimes carrying them out. Um, and there have been instances where they've been carried out in a body bag. So I'm starting a series called Real Survival. Okay. It's not bushcraft. The average guy that comes here now, I mean, we got local people that hunt these woods that are woodsmen and they have wood skills. But I will tell you that the, the thousands that come from the cities to get their deer and elk are not trained in bushcraft. They're not trained in even basic survival. Many of them don't bring anything with them other than, you know, a cooler full of food and, and drink and uh, their rifle or bow and a hunting knife. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to start this series, Real Survival. Starting with gear that you should be bringing with you so that search and rescue, you know, can help find you so you can keep yourself alive and uh, not end up being a casualty. So let's get down to business um, right off again. We're going to start with gear that they should be bringing out here. These are people who don't have, you know, like I said, wilderness survival training. They don't have uh, bushcraft training. And with the help of some basic items and just a little bit of knowledge, they can do the two most important things. Aid in their rescue. Okay, Aid in their rescue. Because if you are lost, search and rescue is aware. We... we I've been out here and helped them go through this every year. We know it's an absolute guaranteed fact that when the hunters come and when the hunters start hunting, there will be some who get lost. And there'll be people, you know, coming into town, getting a hold of the sheriff or the police saying, hey, my husband or my partner went out up this trail and I'm yelling, I can't find him, he didn't come back. You know, it, it's going to happen. So let's start with the basics. We got a buy mart here in Prineville, and I can tell you that all week long um, during hunting season, it is filled with hunters buying last minute gear. So this is just a simple buy mart backpack. It's nothing fancy. It was what was hanging on the shelf. Um, it's kind of a durable material. The stitching's pretty solid and stuff. So I grabbed it, and this is pretty much something that any hunter could grab, inexpensive, hanging on the shelf at buy mart. Wide variety of styles and colors. I'm a camo guy. I got my red on because, you know, rifle season. But just a simple backpack. Now, there isn't a lot in here weight-wise. There's plenty of room to add your lunch, to add any extra comfort items that you'd like to have. It's not heavy, but it's got the things in here to help you survive, to help you stay alive and to help in your rescue. All right. I'm gonna start right here in just this top pocket. There's a little zippered pocket right on top. I got a whistle. It's easy to get to. Okay, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the hunter throughout this video series and I'm gonna deliberately do some things wrong explain what I did wrong, and then do some things right, showing you what to do. So let's assume that you're a hunter and you've got out here and you're hunting with other people, someone's nearby. 
start bl whistling, start blowing the whistle, start uh, letting people know that you're in trouble and you need some help. And in worst case scenario, if um, search and rescue is out here looking for you and you hear them in a distance shouting, you know, maybe your voice is weak or you've lost your voice because you've been yelling for help, get the whistle out, start blowing the whistle. This thing will carry a long, long ways. It will help them find you. This may or may not be help to you depending on your skill level, but throw a compass in anyway. At the very least, maybe you can get a direction when you're going up a certain trail and just spin your dial around, go the opposite direction back, and it will help you keep from getting lost. Have one in there anyway, even, even if you're not sure, just in case it could help you. All right, let's go into the back pockets here. Items to keep you from getting lost and to help you get rescued. Number one, in my opinion, is flagging tape. Get some bright orange flagging tape. When you are hiking up a trail or something, if you decide to leave that trail, if you decide to leave that old logging road, stop, tie a long streamer of this onto a tree walk for a ways make absolutely sure that it does not get out of your sight when you are almost to lose sight of it tie on another and another and keep going turn around follow them back take them off the tree put them back in your pack or in your pocket so you have them again for later this will save your life how many times has search and rescue been out here because someone they're walking up an old logging road or trail which we're going to do um, in the next video we're going to go get lost deliberately they're walking up an old trail and they decide, well, I'm just going to make a circle back to the trail. I'm going to make a circle back to the road. And they never make it back to the road. Something happens. They go farther than they thought than they should have, not far enough, whatever. And they end up lost. They panic. They start going quicker and they just get farther and farther away. Mark your trail, guys. Mark your trail. Number two, if you're marking your trail and you still get lost, you have given search and rescue a path to follow. And this stuff, I'm on top of a hill right now and there's actually a big opening right here. I can hang long streamers all around the trees. Search and rescue will put up planes and stuff and uh, helicopters. This will help you get found. Parachute cord, bright orange again. You can make more signal devices, more streamers. And if you end up having to build a shelter or something, you're going to need cordage. You don't want green cordage or brown that you're going to lose on the ground. Bright orange. Everything that you can go with bright orange or red or yellow. Something that you can be seen. In case you end up having to build a shelter, build a fire, whatever, you don't need a handful of slivers. Just keep a, a pair of leather gloves in here. Also, when it starts to get chilled... Um, it's not a lot, but it's better than having your bare hands out. It's going to be raining. It rained last night. Snow will be coming soon. There's no guarantee you're going to have a dry, warm place to sit or lay. 55-gallon drum liner or garbage bag will uh, help dramatically keep in your body dry. And... Uh, also, ways to make insulation. We'll cover that along the way. I like to throw in. This is a survival ba bandana, head survival bandana. It doesn't matter if it's a regular bandana or whatever, but just get bright orange. I can put this on over my hat, and you know what? If, if I end up having to wave, from a distance or a helicopter or a plane, I can wave this around. I can have it on my head so that my head stands out. Let's get a bright orange bandana or a couple bright orange bandanas. They got other uses, medical, whatnot, and keep them in your kit. Other than that, back in here, throw together, even if it's just band-aids and sting wipes and antibiotic ointment and some you know, ibuprofen or Tylenol. Just throw some basic first aids in a Ziploc, if nothing else. And uh, 
I have some insect repellent down in here. That's a good idea because there's no sense in just being miserable if you end up being stuck out here. This will help put it on your face, your neck, wherever you're exposed. Keep the mosquitoes and the ants and things off of you. Okay. All right, let's go to bigger pockets. So we're ways to save ourselves and a way to help ourselves get saved. Go up here. This is more about signaling. I have another whistle tucked in here. Extremely important to be heard. Like I said, the sound will carry for miles. I have a flashlight. Not so much for seeing at night, but I can signal at night. People are looking. I'm up on a hill or, or a plane's coming over. I can flash the light. Same with a little headlamp. Get something that has a strobe on it. So like this one here. Oh, I had it. Here we go. Something that has, uh, this has a strobe setting, so it will start strobing. And that, again, signaling devices. If somebody sees a light strobing or a flashlight you know, going on and off, at night repeatedly, they're gonna come see what's going on, especially if they're out here looking for someone that's lost. Again, we put up the planes and the helicopters. Signal mirror, they're out here flying over looking at you. You can flash that light and help them find you. Getting rescued, staying alive. Let's get into the big pack. And where's my zipper? Here we go. All right. Now, I highly recommend one of these heavy duty emergency blankets with the reflective liner inside in bright orange. This thing is huge. A big five by seven bright orange square that I can set out on a hillside or tie up in some trees. It's gonna give me shelter. Maybe it's raining, I need to get out of the rain. It's gonna give me at least a little bit of warmth as I wrap it around my body. But at the same time, bright orange that can be seen to aid in your rescue. Water. This is a cheap, no name brand single wall stainless steel bottle and I'm not going to get dehydrated at least not immediately because I've got some water with me and this will help this will help you single wall if you have to have a fire and you've got a water source you can set this in the fire and purify it This is probably more about morale than survival, but more, keeping your morale up helps dramatically if you're lost. Your favorite snacks or items, you know, Vienna sausages, jerky, um, trail mix. I have cliff bars all sealed up in one of those airtight bags. Whatever you need um, and would like to have with you for food items. When you realize you're lost and you're able to keep your calm enough to, you know, sit down and start getting ready, you know, making plans. I'm going to have to stay the night. I need to get a fire. I need to get a shelter or I just need to set up some signals. Having food, I can drink some water, eat some jerky, have my favorite energy bar is going to be a big morale booster and it will help you keep warmer at night. Like these cliff bars and things that are loaded with calories, things with peanut butter in them. Eat that at night before you try to go to sleep and it will help keep you warmer. 
All right. Uh, in addition, the hunters are going to have their hunting knife. A lot of hunters just have a large folding buck type knife. Some carry a sheath knife. In addition to that, get something that you can uh, abuse if you need to, and it's a backup knife. This is just a simple Mora companion, but it's again bright orange sheath. If I drop this on the ground, even even the knife itself, I'm gonna find it right away because of the bright orange. And I have batoned with this. You can see it's uh, well used. I've batoned with it. I've cut tree boughs with it to make emergency shelter. I've got shavings with it um, for fire. So it'll get you through. And it's, well, I think they're still well under 20 bucks. I might be wrong, but they were when I got this one. Other thing, a lot of hunters carry a game saw. Make sure if you have a game saw that you have an extra blade that will cut wood. And if not, get yourself just a basic baco or something, a folding saw. Because again, if you have to stay the night, and especially as winter starts to come in and the snow comes and the cold comes, this is going to help me get some firewood. It's going to help me get tree boughs off of a tree to make a shelter if that's what I need to do. It's going to be a life-saving, invaluable tool to have with you. Fire. Keep it simple. Okay. As simple as it is for us bushcrafters, there's a lot of hunters that have never, ever struck a ferro rod. I'll show them a ferro rod and a cotton ball and they'll be like, wow, this is amazing. But there's a lot of them that don't have never done that. They don't even know. So keep it simple. I got a bright orange Bic lighter. I drop it on the ground. Again, bright orange. Even better, I've got windproof, waterproof matches in a bright orange container. These are Uko. And... Your lighter quits working, guys. Your lighter quits working when it gets below freezing. Hunters are going to be out here maybe and they're panicking and they're going crazy thinking, why wasn't my lighter working? Why can't I get a fire? I've got all of this material with me to get a fire going and my lighter won't light. Calm down. Windproof, waterproof matches. I believe they have, I want to say, 10, 15, maybe 15 second burn time. They're not going to go out in the rain. They're not going to go out in the wind. And you make darn sure that you have tinder with you. Because even if you have the skill, you don't need to be getting even more lost wandering around trying to find fat wood or make shavings. And uh, odds are, if you're you know, a city dweller, you're probably not going to know how to find fat wood out here anyway. Cotton balls with Vaseline. You can make them at home. If you don't want to do that, there is other options such as wet fire and tinder cubes and tinder tabs. Go on Amazon, type in tinder, and you'll find all kinds of sources. Lastly, um, I recommend carrying some type of a little water filter you know, you may end up not being near a water source. It's really dry right now. I know that if I hike to the bottom of this valley, but that's because I know the Ochicos. This is my backyard and I can, I, I can find water. I know where to go. But at the bottom of this valley, there is a place um, where there's still puddles in the creek. This is just a cheap Sawyer. They hang on the wall in Bymart. And again, Pretty much everything in here can be got at uh, Bymart. Might be different brands or slightly different styles, but from the folding saws to, you know, bright orange bandanas and match cases and things, Bymart, Amazon, little water filter system like this Sawyer, if you are near a water source, could be invaluable in hydrating. And I believe I didn't stick anything else in here that I didn't show you guys. Okay. 
Now, let's add a tip or two to this, and then I'm gonna go get lost, and we're gonna make video number two. I'm gonna take off out here. I, in reality, I won't be lost. It's pretty hard for me to get lost in my backyard. It can happen, but I'm not really lost. I might be just turned around and worst case scenario, okay, I'll just hike down a different hill to a different creek and a different road and uh, work my way back the long way. But uh, we're gonna become the hunter and we're gonna go out here and get lost. Couple tips. Hunters, when they're out here, they take off early in the morning, a lot of times before daylight on their first walk. So they do like me, you know, I've, I've got layers on. They'll layer up and put on their big red hunting shirt or bright orange jacket, vest, stocking cap, because your ears are cold. Right now it's around freezing, my hands are cold. Put on their gloves, they go out for their morning walk. They don't have any luck. So nine, 10 o'clock, they walk back to their rig. They take all of this stuff off, throw it in the rig, and then go back out <coughs> in the afternoon with all of this stuff left in the vehicle. Whatever you took with you in the cold morning, whatever you took with you in the cold evening, when you take it off, put it in your pack. Do not leave anything in your vehicle that you think you're gonna need out with you at any time. If I get warm, I'll put my gloves in my pack. I'll put my hat in my pack. I'll take this shirt off, fold it up, put it in my pack. Because if I go out in the afternoon and that happens to be when I get lost and then I'm there in the evening and the cold sets in, I have a way to layer back up and prevent you know, my hands from getting frostbit, going numb, not being able to use them and my ears and my head losing all the heat. I have uh, all these extra layers. So don't leave anything with you in, you know, that you would have with you at any time in your vehicle. Put it in your pack. I'm gonna add a note real quick. I meant, I meant to say this at the beginning because of YouTube regulations and rules, no discussion or pictures or, or anything else to do with firearms beyond what I just said will be mentioned because I don't wanna have my videos um, edited, taken down or anything else. So we're just gonna assume it's hunting season and the obvious, they have a bow or firearm. That's, we're leaving it at that. Second, this is the worst thing that we see uh, when we're out here doing search and rescue. The vast majority of hunters, and even you locals do this, you park your vehicle and you make the decision, I'm just going to go out and go for a little 20 minute walk. I'm going to go out and make a circle and come back to the rig. And because you think you're only going to be out for 20 minutes or a half hour, you leave everything in the rig except for your hunting tool and your hunting knife. You don't pick up your pack. You don't shove anything in your pockets. Just, hey, I'm, I'm just going to make a 20 minute walk and come back to the rig. And that's how we find you. That's how search and rescue finds you. They find you with your hunting tool and your hunting knife and not a single thing with you, not a snack, not a drink of water, not a lighter to start a fire, nothing because you had in your head, you were just gonna make a short walk back to the vehicle. And sure enough, on your short walk, you saw a deer and you decided to take off after it. You saw tracks, you took off after it. You actually shot at something, may have wounded it, may have missed, but you're out trying to trail it and in the excitement you didn't pay attention and now all of a sudden you look up and I have no idea which way the vehicle is. You think it's this way, you start walking this way, you're in the wrong direction and now you're even worse lost. You're not going to make it back. Search and rescue may be a day or two before they're out looking for you. They will be looking as soon as they know but in the meantime you have nothing with you because you left everything in your vehicle. Don't do it. I don't care if you decided, hey, all I'm gonna do is hike up into the brush to go to the bathroom and come back to the rig. This pack, you know, it might take you an extra minute to throw it on, but it's not heavy. Have a survival kit in a backpack, in a fanny pack. A lot of hunters wear vests. 
pretty much everything in here will fit in vest pockets or on a belt in pouches. Do whatever you need to do, but don't leave your stuff in the rig. Okay, guys. Again, I know a lot of you who subscribe to this channel are real bushcrafters, real um, wilderness survivalists, people who prepare for bug outs and different things. But I'm telling you, thousands and thousands of hunters have descended upon the woods. There's, uh, I, I've heard um, some vehicles on this distant hillside, so they actually probably heard me when I blew the whistle. They're all around me up here in the woods. And the vast majority of them do not have any bushcraft skills, wilderness skills like we have. I'm trying to reach out to them on their level. And so I am the most basic gear that you can get at Biomart, that you can get on Amazon, bright orange colors. Nothing in here is expensive. Have it with you, take it with you. And as we go out here and get lost and apply skills, I'm going to try to keep everything as simple as I can. The average guy coming down to here to hunt probably doesn't know how to do a trucker's hitch, probably doesn't know how to do a bowling knot. So those things are out the window. Can you tie your shoe and do an overhand knot? Okay, then we'll stick to overhand knots when we do a shelter. We're gonna do it at their level and prayerfully they'll see these videos and apply what I'm teaching and uh, you know, they'll help search and rescue find them that much quicker and ensure that they keep themselves alive and safe while they're searching for them. So guys, this is Real Survival Part 1. Uh, I'm going to go out here and get lost, and we're going to make the second video today. And then as hunting season progresses and the weather continues to worsen, we're going to keep this series going. I, I want to save fire I th until the snow comes, so... We may not necessarily do the videos in any special order, you know, shelter, fire, water, whatever. Um, I'm going to address things as the weather worsens. But uh, with that in mind, let's go get lost. Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft, thanks for watching.